Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So last week on one of our instant deck techs, we did this historical standard deck tech from way back in 1996 for a deck called Fruity Pebbles, a really interesting infinite combo deck. And as I was doing that deck tech, I realized, and I mentioned it in the deck tech, that we have the pieces to build Fruity Pebbles in modern. And better yet, not only do we have the pieces, the pieces are pretty cheap, so we can build a budget version, modern legal, of Fruity Pebbles, and that's what we're playing this week. So I'm really excited to try out this deck. It's really cool when you can find old decks that used to be really good and kind of port them over and update them and play them in a current format. So a quick reminder before we break down modern Fruity Pebbles. If you enjoy Budget Magic and the other series here on the channel, it would be amazing of you if you could take a quick second, click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Fruity Pebbles in Modern, and first a quick refresher. This is where the deck comes from. This was the original Fruity Pebbles combo. Basically, if you can get down to an Enduri Renewal, which is a really weird card, it makes it so you can't draw creatures. If you would draw a creature, you mill it instead. However, it also makes it so if any of your creatures die, they go to your graveyard, but then bounce back to your hand. So the loop here is we get down to Enduring Renewal, and this is the original loop. You get down a Goblin Bombardment, which lets you sack a creature to deal a damage. Then you play a free creature like Shield Sphere, and with an Enduring Renewal out, you can just keep sacking the free creature, pinging the opponent with Goblin Bombardment. The Shield Spear, for example, bounces back to your hand. You play it again, ping again, and the end result is essentially infinite damage. So this is where Fruity Pebble started, but obviously not all these pieces are legal in modern, so we gotta find some substitutes. The good news is, Enduring Renewal is legal. It is a time-shifted card, so it snuck its way into modern by being time-shifted. Without Enduring Renewal, the combo just wouldn't work. That's kind of the foundation. So we have the Enduring Renewal. As far as our sacrifice outlets, we kind of switch it up and we have two different options. First, Blasting Station is essentially literal Goblin Bombardment at least in our deck. So you can tap it to sack a creature to deal a damage to a creature or player, very much like Goblin Bombardment, and then whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you get to untap it. So we play a free creature, sack it to Blasting Station, get that creature back with Enduring Renewal, eventually ping our opponent to death, exactly like Goblin Bombardment from the original deck. Grinding Station lets us mill our opponent out. So the reason there's a split here is kind of twofold. Grinding Station is cheaper, and occasionally we want to like win on turn six by playing Enduring Renewal from our hand, our Sacrifice Outlet from our hand, and then our Free Creature, and we can't really do that with Blasting Station, but we can with Grinding Station. On the other hand, we gotta have the split because... Grinding Station isn't a guaranteed win if our opponent has a shuffle in effect, so if we run into an Emrakul or so forth, we want to have a way to kill with damage. Also, cards like Surgical Extraction are really popular right now. So many decks are playing for Surgical Extraction in the sideboard, and if we went all in on one combo piece, I mean, I guess they can still kill Enduring Renewal, but 4 mana enchantment is a lot harder to kill than a 3 or less mana artifact, but if they surgically extracted a one of our combo pieces, we still have another one to use to win the game because we really have to win with the combo. Our backup plan for winning is not very good or even realistic. So uh, that's part one. Part two is we get our free creatures. So Enduring Renewal, Blasting Station, or Grinding Station. And then for free creatures, we have Memnite and Ornithopter. It really doesn't matter. Shield Sphere and the old ones they use and aren't legal in Modern were in the deck because they had some toughness so they could block in the early game. That's not really that relevant in our deck. Basically, we just want artifacts that we can play for free free that are also creatures, so Memnite and Ornithopter are the two options in Modern. More Ornithopters than Memnite because Memnite is not actually bulk. Ornithopter is super cheap, Memnite's like over a dollar a copy, so this split still gives us six in total, so we have four Enduring Renewals, six Sack Outlets, six free creatures, and it's the cheapest way to get it under the budget. The rest of the deck is based around setting up the combo and also protecting the combo. So we have a ton of cantrips, sleight of hand, serum visions. These just let us, on turn one, 
cast them, find a combo piece. Uh, they do that throughout the game, actually, so very effective for helping us find the combo pieces that we needed. Interestingly, I started off with a version that only had certain visions and not sleight of hand and had more control elements, and it was having trouble finding the combo pieces, so switching to eight cantrips instead of four was a huge deal. Thirst for Knowledge is awesome in our deck. It gets us three deep, and we have a ton of artifacts. We have six Memnites slash Ornithopters, six of the station artifacts, so we have a lot of things to discard to Thirst because we don't really need more than one of those. Once we get a second Memnite in our hand, we don't really need it, so we can discard it for free, and it gets us three cards deep in our deck to find combo pieces. And then Teleria West, fairly low opportunity cost. We want blue mana. It does enter tap, but it lets us transmute for Ornithopter or Memnite as an additional way to find our combo pieces. So these cards pretty much just help make sure that we find our combo pieces in a quick manner, as efficiently as possible, so hopefully, I mean, our best draw is we just win on turn four. If we can play a station on turn two or three, Enduring Renewal on turn four, then we just win the game. So these cards we cast in between there to help set up our combo as often as possible, as quickly as possible to win the game. We also have some mana leaks just to disrupt our opponent, also to protect our combo to some extent, help force our combo through counters, keep it alive through random removal spells, and then a bit of removal to deal with our opponent stuff, a couple of paths, a Condemn, Great Against Death Shadow, a Day of Judgment to Wrath the Board, and then Detention Sphere is actually really important because one of the downsides of this combo is it does scoop to a lot of hate. Like, it scoops to Leyline of Sanctity, it scoops to Stony Silence, it scoops to Rest in Peace, so Detention Sphere gives us a main deck out to those cards. Not that our opponent will often have them in the main deck, but it's nice to just have a hedge in case we run into some weird matchup where our opponent has this hate piece that we just can't beat. We can all Always uh, cantrip and thirst for knowledge into our detention sphere and get rid of it. And then we got a bunch more in the sideboard because that's one of the most important aspects of designing a combo deck is having those answers in the sideboard because we know a high percentage of decks are going to bring in really hateful cards that we couldn't beat otherwise. Mana base, a bunch of budget duels, and then some basic lands, the Telerio SB already talked about, sideboard. So we're kind of built around protecting our combo. Echoing Truth lets us bounce a Stony Silence, a Rest in Peace, a Ley Line of Sanctity, whatever is messing up our combo plans. And it gets rid of all copies, which makes it better than other bounce spells. So if our opponent somehow has double Stony Silence, it gets rid of both of them. Cast on our opponent's end step, untap, combo off win. Negate and Dispel to help force our combo through counters. Also helps protect our combo against, I don't know, Ancient Grudge, Wear Tear, things like that that would be able to disrupt our combo. And then Apostle's Blessing is just a one of, but it's an additional way to save our combo pieces from like Abrupt Decay, which we couldn't answer with our other answers, but by giving it protection and it can target artifacts for just one mana, it would fizzle like an Abrupt Decay that otherwise we couldn't stop. Disenchant, also Stony Silence, Rest in Peace, those type of things, Leyline of Sanctity, more answers to that, and if you run into a deck that is playing white, just bring in these cards, because it's too high risk not to. If your opponent is playing colors, uh, white in specific, but colors with a lot of hate cards, Bring in your sideboard answers. It's much better to have a couple of dead cards and find out that your opponent, for some reason, isn't playing Stony Silence, Rest in Peace, etc., than to go into the game and have your opponent play a Stony Silence by surprise and you just be like, oh, I, I just can't win, or I just have one out. It's my detention sphere. So be proactive with your sideboard hate cards. Celestial Purge, Condemn, and Tormod Script just give us some more interaction with our opponent. Tormod Script for Graveyards. And that is Fruity Pebbles for Modern. And that's our budget magic deck for this week so i'm really excited to try this one out i think it's i think it's pretty sweet so obviously there's some downsides it's a three card combo essentially we need to have uh, one of the stations one of our zero mana artifacts and also the enduring renewal the good news is we have a lot of ways to find them. There's a ton of cantrips. Thirst for Knowledge is insane. We even have Teleria West, so we should be able to set it up pretty consistently. More consistently than you might think, I guess. So I think that we have a reasonable chance of getting some wins with this deck. Obviously, the risk is we scoop to a lot of hate cards, but you see that with other decks as well. Eggs-type decks, other storm-type decks, there's really powerful hate cards against those decks as well, and while that's 
something to be aware of and something to build your deck for, it doesn't just make those decks unplayable. So is this going to be better than Storm or something? Probably not, but it's super cheap, it's super unique, and it's really cool to be able to bring a historic deck back into a new format so i'm really excited anyway that's our budget magic for this week fruity pebbles for modern so thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoy the gameplay videos and i will talk to you soon thanks for watching the video if you haven't already take a minute and click that subscribe button it's a great way to support the channel for free and you'll find the next video in the playlist right here